How you doing? Good. Um, usually, obviously, All Star is such a kind of big, long weekend event packed with fans, fanfare, that kind of thing. What are your thoughts on this year's game being kind of tamped down a little bit, playing in front of, I guess, about fifteen hundred people tonight, and just the different actions y'all are under? Uh, it's it's for sure different. It's um, but I think it's you know they're just trying to be as safe as they possibly can while still, um, you know, hosting the All-Star game. And I'm curious to see how it's going to look. Uh, you know, we got all the events happening today. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot different than how it was last year. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, grateful to be an All-Star for second year in a row and, um, you know, try to enjoy it as much as we can. Next question, Jason, is from Valencia King. Good morning, Jason. Thank you for your time today and congratulations on All-Star. I know that you've always been and been prideful in uh, giving back in the community and being involved in the community. Can you talk about who instilled that attitude of giving back into you and as a parent, how you would do so? Um, it was my mom kind of instilled that in me. And it was just, you know, the environment and where I grew up um, in St. Louis. And I always just told myself that, um, you know, when the opportunity came, you know, when I, you know, became successful and made it that, uh, you know, I would want to give back and help out as many people and kids from St. Louis to, to reach and chase their dreams you know, like I was. So, uh, you know, I've always kind of uh, thought like that from, uh, from a young age. Next up is Joe Barton. Hey, Jason. Uh, good to see you. Um, so you're on a team with Kyrie and, and Zion tonight. Uh, so you've got the Duke triumvirate going. And so I wanted to ask, um, who do you think is the best Duke player ever? And I don't mean the most successful player at Duke, but who's the best player to come from Duke? Oh, um, I think right now, it might have to be Grant Hill. Like if basketball was somehow to just stop today. Um, obviously Kyrie is is up there, you know, with gold medals and how many all-star appearances he has. And obviously he has a championship. Um, but I just think right now, obviously, you know, Kyrie could pass that. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm chasing that. Um, but I think right now, Grant Hill would have to be the best dude for it right now. Chris Ryan. Hey, hey, G hey, Jason, congrats on the, uh, the all-star game. Wanted to um, ask you a little bit about what you and Jalen are talking about the other night with the competitiveness that you guys have playing, you know, one-on-one -on -one a lot after practice. In what ways do you think that you have made Jalen better? And in what ways do you think that he has made you better, uh, both on and off the court? Uh, just two, uh, especially when I came in, um, just two young guys trying to prove they so. Obviously, he had been here a year before me. Uh, we had the same, at this, when I first got here, first two years, we had the same shooting coach, Shrewsbury. Uh, so we always kind of shot together. Uh, and we're just always in the gym, always working, always trying to get better. And uh, we're just trying to push each other. And a lot of one-on-one -on -one games, a lot of shooting drills. And uh, it just came kind of natural. Hello, Jason. Uh, I wanted to ask you, your this will be your second all-star game and uh if you were a team captain of uh, one of the events which will be the team you want to play with with which will be the other four guys you would choose if i was a team captain uh lebron steph jb 
Brad Bill. Next question is from David Cinellato. Hey Jason, David from Italy. Um, looking at your career in in the NBA, uh, which is the, the the thing you're most proud of, and what what kind of level do you think you can reach going on? Um, for me, I don't you know I don't put a a ceiling on it. Um, I think first and foremost, I want to be I want to be a champion. Um, I think that's why you play is the to reach the highest level is that's, that's the winning championship. So I believe that, you know, if that's what you aim for and that's what is, is that's the goal, the ultimate goal, then I think all the other individual accolades will, will take care of itself. So, um, you know, first and foremost, this championship is the, is the main number one priority and everything else will take care of itself. Gary Washburn. What's up, Jason? Um, you talk a lot, and your your relationship close with your mom has has, has been well chronicled. You talk a lot, but your dad was coached against you in high school. He 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 kind of was the guy who kind of helped you get to a certain level. How has your success uh, influenced him? What does he think about it? And how is being you being a father? kind of viewed, change your relationship with your father. I mean, now you are a father yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, my dad is the first person to, uh, you know, he played basketball at St. Louis University, played overseas for a few years and, you know, kind of put the ball in my hand at a very young age and, you know, coached me and worked me out all the way up until probably, probably about eighth grade. Um, and, Basketball wise, I mean, as tough as a parent can be on their kid, um, as you could imagine, you know, many a times where, you know, I wanted to quit playing basketball because, you know, he didn't, he didn't make it fun for me. Um, you know, he was so tough. And, you know, as I got older, I realized that, you know, he just saw the potential in me, even at a young age. And, he just felt like, you know, being that tough um, would, would push me. And it did, because uh, oftentimes I would, you know, work out or I would, you know, play in a sense of, you know, to kind of prove him wrong, you know, because he would kind of tell me what I could and couldn't do, you know, just to kind of get under my skin and push my buttons. So for a long time, you know, everything I did was kind of the kind of to prove him wrong. And, uh you know, that was part of our relationship. And now I would say since I got to college, he's become more of a fan. Um, and I think our relationship has gotten a lot better um, because of that. But, you know, he was just doing, you know, what he thought was best. And it, it worked. You know, it definitely pushed me, um, you know, to really, really love basketball. Taylor Snow. Hey, Jason, uh, Jalen said the other day how you better not try to guard him tonight. Um, and I know that defense isn't typically a point of emphasis in the All-Star game, but are you, do you think you'll be defending him with a little extra intensity tonight if given the chance? I mean, I didn't play JV so much in practice and in one-on-one. -on -one that I mean, I'm sure if we're on the court at the same time, I'm not, I'm sure, I mean, it might happen. Um, you know, but I was thinking about guarding somebody else just because we play each other so much. But if it does happen, I mean, I know all of his moves. Um, I know what he's going to do. So uh, I ain't going to let him score. John Corrales. Jason, have you had any opportunity to <clears throat> prepare for the three-point contest, shooting off of racks or anything like that? And just how different is it? shooting off of racks going from spot to spot than your normal shooting? Yeah, I got some practice. Uh, I worked on it a couple times. You know, just kind of get the technique down. Like you said, it is a difference grabbing the ball off the rack. The balls are different. Uh, the money balls. Uh, so I definitely have to go practice for that. Uh, but it should be fun. Uh, you know, I'm a little 
disappointed it won't be, you know, 25,000 people there. But at the same time, that might help. You know, you might get a little nervous, you know, being only one shooting. But since there's only going to be 1,000 people there, uh, you know, it might make it a little, a little easier, actually. Dan Wilkie? Hey, Jason. Um, for the teams that were in the bubble the longest, people have talked pretty openly about just kind of the mental challenges, the short offseason provided and stuff like that. Um, I know out in L.A., the Lakers haven't really practiced much. You guys have talked about being drained. What, what has been sort of your physical, and sort of emotional, <clears throat> what's been sort of the toll of, of the bubble, and are you still feeling it um, today? Um, I, I would think so. Um, the bubble, as much as I enjoyed it, as much as, you know, the NBA did a great job, it was a lot. Um, you know, I think we were there for 80 days or something of that nature and just the mental toll and obviously going deep into the playoffs, um, you know, it, it was tough. And, you know, obviously we had a really quick turnaround. But, you know, they're not the only team. Like you said, the Lakers, they went further than we did. They won it. Um, and they got some guys that are older than than us on our team. So um, I think that's why the, the league has kind of been so up and down this year. Uh, is it, I think the Bobo has, has, a, has a large part to do with that, um, especially just the beginning of the season, you know, everybody just trying to get their win back trying to get back in shape um, and everything like that. Dan Roach. Hi, Jason. Um, just a, a thought on, um, on what, what it means to you to represent the Boston Celtics and obviously playing in your second game. How much more do you think you'll enjoy it uh, because a lot of times athletes will say their heads are on a swivel that first game, kind of like trying to get a sense of what it's all about and kind of stargazing and everything else. How much are you just going to try to, with all that you've been through personally and as a team, enjoy uh, the experience of tonight? Yeah. Um, I, I remember last year I was, I think I, I the, when I woke up that morning, I was nervous because uh, it was all surreal to me. It was, it was new. And, uh, you know, you still get excited. Like, I'm still excited about today. But I know what to expect a little bit more. Uh, I won't be nearly as nervous. I'll be a lot more relaxed. Um, I only had six points last time. So, I think I'm just trying to score more each year. So, hopefully I can get more than six points today. Last couple of questions. Jason, Jason Smalls. What's going on, Jason? Congrats on All Star. Um, this game, this All Star game, is um, in dedication to HBCUs, and I am a student HBCU journalist from Bennett College. So um, my question is, if you could start your restart your college career over again, what HBCU would you go to, and why? That's a great question. Um, it would be two schools in mind. Um, being from St. Louis, Harris Stowe um, University which was, which is in St. Louis, uh, downtown, right next to St. Louis University. Uh, you know, I had basketball camps, summer league basketball games there. Um, I know plenty of people that went to Harris, though, um, and that's right in my backyard. And secondly, or another choice, um, being that I went to Duke for one year, um, North Carolina Central was – down the street and um, coach Lavelle Moten, who is still a, uh, you know, a great friend of mine, uh, call him Unc. Uh, you know, I've known him for, I've known him since I was in high school. And, uh, you know, I went to, I was on North Carolina Central Campus a lot uh, when I was at Duke. Uh, and they have, they have a really, really good basketball program. I think they, been to the tournament, you know, a couple of times the last several years. So if I, if it had to be one of those, if I had to choose, it would be one of those two schools. Final question for Jason is from Tom Westerholm. 
Jason, I, I know we've asked you about this a bunch, but just as someone who's experienced COVID and kind of the after effects of it, I'm just curious, like how you, how confident you feel about tonight's game, especially in light of, uh, you know, the news about Embiid and Simmons not being able to play. Yeah, I did see that. Um, and I think, I think that's just kind of where we're at. Um, you know, as much as precaution the NBA takes and as many uh, rules and, you know, safety protocols that are in place, you know, we do know that some things you just can't control. Uh, and they try to keep us as safe as possible. And I think for the most part, they do a great job. But, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. And I hope those guys are okay. Because uh, it's not, you know, something that you want to contract or experience. Uh, I know I, it affects you and how it can make you feel. But um, I think I think that's just, you know, kind of what we um, – kind of what we've known coming into the season that, you know, guys were going to test positive, games were going to be postponed. Um, and I think that's just part of it. Uh, you can't, you can't, uh, can't fully protect or, you know, stop it from happening. You can just do your best, try to stay as safe as possible. Um, I think, you know, the NBA for the most part has done a good job.